Minha gerente. My other assistants. I thank her. Eu agradeço a ela. And I thank all of you for her. Eu agradeço a todos vocês por ela. She gave everything to him, and I think there's there's a different Axel Rose middle and end of his story without Betta. After nearly 15 years and 13 million dollars, Chinese democracy is finally released. But instead of touring, he hides away with Betta and her family in a life he can control. He's not popular enough to tour as a solo artist. He's taking stock at this point. The album has failed to live up to expectations. Guns and Roses are no more. What is he going to do now? He's a guy that nearly went broke. People don't understand this, but he nearly went broke because um, he had such an empty hole that he was trying to fill in his psyche, in his heart, in his being. Having destroyed almost everything, Axel finally realizes there's only one way to put it all back together. I saw you four times in concert. Axel! Yes? Yes, I love you. 20 years ago? Yeah. <laughs> Axel has spent so much making Chinese democracy that he now needs to make the money back. It's a tricky time for him. No one wants to die alone. No one wants to die poor and alone. No one wants to miss their chance. There's one solution, but it would involve a big change of heart. There's always a reunion, however long it takes. They always will in the end, because the profile runs out, the money runs out. And so eventually, after enough time has passed, everybody's memories are short or shot to pieces. They can't remember why they fell out in the first place. Axel can no longer be fully in control. A reunion is on their terms, not just his. We will do this with you, Axel. But the first time you cancel a show, the first time you walk off mid-set and there's a riot, the first time you don't come on stage for 11.30 and the promoter charge, they have a curfew at all these shows. They charge you a fortune if you go over the curfew. Finally, Axel agrees to do what they ask. January 5th, 2016. After nearly two decades, Guns N' Roses announces the majority of the original members are reuniting. The band were completely splintered and frayed, and at the last second, he pulled them back together and sold out stadiums. Axel likes to destroy something till it's almost completely irretrievably lost and damaged forever, and then at the last second, he scoops up the pieces and puts it back together. We started talking like in the in the spring, you yeah. know, yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, it, it, it's like everybody's people are finding out about possibilities and things like that. April 1st, 2016. Guns N' Roses plays at the Troubadour, the same club they had broken onto the scene at back in 1985. April Fool's Day, 2016. They play the Troubadour, the most legendary venue in Los Angeles. Uh, you can't get a ticket for love nor money. The queues around the block, the whole of LA seems to pitch up trying to get in. Celebrity Central. But this time, the Axl Rose taking the stage is a different person. <laughs> It's kind of come full circle. I think maybe through the tragedy, through the self-destruction, through the mistakes, through the endless bonfires he lit with his own career and his own life, somehow he survived and suddenly he's got something back. The new improved all singing, all dancing, um, heading for the 21st century, Axl Rose, you know, um, a better version of himself. The Not In This Lifetime tour would turn out to be one of the most successful tours ever. In three years, they grossed just under $600 million from over 5 million tickets. And he figured a way to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. 
and he figured a way to re reconnect with Slash, which is his, you know, Slash and Duff, his two most important, you know, professional relationships, and they're out there kicking ass. In letting go of the need to control, Axel seems to have discovered an inner peace. He can even cope when things go wrong. The problem was that Axel broke his foot at the Troubadour gig, so a week later, they're due to play the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. But crucially, a spokesman assures fans that this time, the show will go on. Instead of canceling the gig or just not going out there and not showing up, Axel performs sitting on a throne made from guitars. And performs the whole show sitting down. Look, at least, at least he got up and performed the show. The fact that he could that he could uh, front front Guns and Roses and do it in a, in, a, in his chair when he started his his voice is magic. He's magic. It seems in these new runs of the Not in This Lifetime tour that he's actually enjoying himself. He actually seems to be kidding around with the crowd. God bless the guy. You know the fact that he's gone through all this bull and all of this stuff, and here he is today, headlining stadiums all over the world. But there is one more twist to come. And then, as if things couldn't get any more ridiculous, uh, ACDC's singer at this point, Brian Johnson, has gone deaf. And so these old Aussie rockers decide to replace Brian with Axl Rose who's unable to leap around and perform because he's got a broken foot. So they replaced Brian Johnson with Axl Rose sitting down. Guns is really supportive about it. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's a bit- I, I, It's pretty I, radical. I, I love that it, and it's, it, it's my job. The most reclusive rock star on the planet is suddenly its highest profile one. Things have changed in the last few years. Fraxel Rose. Um, the tensions that existed between Axel and Slash, Axel and Duff, Axel and the world are still there. They're still there. What's changed is there seems to be a coping mechanism. There finally seems to be something in place in his psyche, in his mind, where he feels enough in control that he's able to show up on time. He's able to do things that don't get him arrested or, or, or destroy his relation, working relationship with the rest of the band. Today, Axel is still writing, recording, and performing. His love for music hasn't diminished. He still has what he always had in the first place, which is immense musical talent and songwriting ability. Axl Rose has spent a lifetime navigating the path of a talented and troubled man, constantly veering between control and sabotage, collaboration and isolation, genius and insanity, brilliant creativity and devastating destruction. I always said the Axl Rose story will come to a bad end because all paths, when you look at them closely, seem to be heading towards self-destruction seem to be heading towards a place that has no happy ending. But for Axel, there does seem to be something of a happy ending. I believe the combination uh, for Axel of having Slash and Duff back in his life and having Betta and Fernando, who have lived with him for years, um, he has a family. Axel's journey fascinates me because he never gave up. That shows a resilience and character that overrides the trauma. He is bigger than his past experiences. And that's the best message of all. In the end, Axel's appetite for destruction is now an appetite for survival. I think that Axel Rose is the last of the great rock stars, like the real charismatic front men, you know, wild, animal magnetism guy. When he's focused, I mean, there is no one better. He's the greatest singer uh, in the history of music. 
uh, particularly given what he's had to overcome on an emotional level. Um, and I'm proud of him, and he's my brother, and I love him. I, I think Axel's biggest legacy is he did it his way. You know, he's like, like Frank Sinatra's lyrics. Whatever he did, he did it his way. And, he ch and God bless him for that.